Hey guys, welcome back. You are tuned into the I Saw It Online YouTube channel. What we're trying is something a little different today. I was online, as I usually am. I saw a recipe video. And I wish I could pronounce the channel's name, but I can't. It's either German or Austrian. I'll link it in the description. And she put this chicken casserole style dish together and it looked really, really good. So I figure I'm gonna try that. So. We're going to put a tiny bit of a, a twist on it based on what my family likes and based on the uh, ingredients that we prefer to use and we're going to uh, give it a spin and see how it works out so for starters we've got three or four potatoes you can peel them she peeled them in her video i prefer to leave the skins on so i just washed the potatoes sliced them into roughly eighth inch thick slices um, we have one yellow onion, medium-sized onion, just roughly chopped, same thing. We are going to layer these in a cast iron skillet, along with a kind of a cream sauce that we're going to make up here in a second. We've already kind of buttered the bottom of this skillet with a little bit of olive oil. onion. Yes, my hands are clean. I didn't totally just pet the dog and not wash my hands. The recipe says that this serves four people. Uh, maybe they grow them smaller over in Germany or Austria. I don't know. But this isn't going to get it for my family, so... You can modify this recipe up and down to suit your particular needs. You could probably get away with using a casserole dish as well. The, uh, the original recipe, the lady used a big non-stick, looked like probably a 12-inch shallow skillet. We're going we're gonna to go deep, as we do. All right, next... We're going to salt and pepper this. Okay, had to get the salt and pepper. Um, in the original video, she uses kosher salt. I don't have any on hand, so I'm just going to use a liberal sprinkling of table salt and ground black pepper. And then she sprinkles it with a little bit of olive oil. All right, guys, what we're going to add to this next, the original recipe called for three boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I prefer to use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. There's just more flavor there. Uh, for my friends here in the States, if you've ever eaten takeout Chinese food with chicken in it and wondered why it's so good, it's because they use chicken thighs and everything instead of chicken breasts. So we're going to take the chicken thighs here. We're going to distribute them in an even layer. And these are cut up into, you know, what are these, one inch chunks, whatever that is. And just put them in an even layer on top of our potato and onion. What I've got here is about four chicken thighs. Let me wash and sanitize my cooking area because as you guys know, whenever you handle chicken or uh, any poultry, eggs for that matter, which you can see right here, uh, you need to keep everything clean because uh, you definitely don't want to risk salmonella. As the uh, great Elton Brown says, or else you'll realize the joy of counting the tiles in your bathroom for the third time in one sitting. You know what I mean? All right, I will be back after I clean up. All right, I've gotten rid of our chickeny cutting board and repositioned the camera. I apologize if the angles aren't too good on this, guys. I'm on a El Cheapy 
tripod here that for one isn't very stable and two isn't very tall so that's what we've got so we're going to use it so in order to fill up our casserole over here what we're going to have is i don't want to call it a custard but it's kind of a custard so we're going to start out with a little bit bigger than the original recipe we're going to use four eggs instead of two to that the original recipe calls for 200 milliliter which is eh, between eight and nine tenths of a cup. We're going to double that and use two cups heavy cream. The recipe calls for red pepper. I didn't have any finely ground red pepper. A lot of recipes you see call red pepper cayenne pepper. It's whatever you want. I found some chipotle chili powder. We're gonna use that. Just a little sprinkle. Recipe calls for one teaspoon of curry powder. We're gonna eyeball it in here and go about one and a half. And it calls to use herb de Provence, but doesn't say how much. So she just shakes it in. I wanna shake about as much as she used. This is very fragrant. So you probably don't want to use too much. And again, we're going to add a little bit more salt and a little bit of fresh cracked black. Now we're going to whisk this all together. And then once I'm done fumbling all that together, we're going to add it to our chicken over here. All right, guys, I've got all that incorporated in. Let's see if I can get this all added to our, our experiment here without making too big of a mess out of it. I went back through the video again just to confirm that she didn't mix this after she added this to the pot. She just put it in, covered it, and then baked it in what translates to a 390 degree Fahrenheit oven. I'm gonna use 375 because we're using cast iron here. So we are going to drop a lid on this. We're gonna put it in our 375 degree oven for 40 minutes. And when that's done, we'll see what it looks like. All right guys, through the magic of television and technology, we are back. Now you may have to adjust your cooking time. I found that 40 minutes was insufficient for as much food and as thick of a skillet as we have. This is a four inch deep cast iron skillet. Um, we had to cook it for an hour and 10 to get to this point. So what do we do from here? We put some cheese. The original recipe called for shredded Gruyere. I couldn't find any of that and I'm too lazy to shred a block myself tonight. So I got shredded provolone and mozzarella blend. So we put this on top as thick as you like. I'm not gonna be too thin with it because there's a lot of food here, so you need a little bit of cheese. Almost enough. And we're going to top that with sliced tomato. Um, you can use any kind of tomato. I like Roma tomato because it doesn't have too much water in it. And there's a lot of liquid in this dish already. So we have our tomato, we have our cheese. We're gonna to top this off again with a tiny bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna go back in the oven, uncovered this time, uh, just long enough to melt the cheese and 
get it to start to turn maybe a little bit brown and to cook our tomatoes a little bit. I'm thinking 10 minutes. So once I get that back out, I'll bring you guys back for the final unveiling. All right, guys, it's out of the oven, looking pretty good. I'll let it cool off a little bit, and then I'll serve up a plate. All right, guys, maybe you got a little overzealous with the Texas-sized helping here, but I have tried it, and I really like it. I will probably make a, a couple of tiny changes. I will season it a little more heavily. Um, as far as salt and pepper goes, um, I didn't want to go too heavy on that because I've never used herb de Provence and all that stuff before. But uh, I'm definitely going to be making this again. So uh, you guys have any recipes to share? Link me a video. Uh, show me something. Uh, I'm willing to try almost anything. Um, I love watching cooking shows. Grew up watching Jeff Smith, the Frugal Gourmet, on Public Access Channel 13, which was a show that I think was syndicated out of... Uh, like Seattle or Portland or Tacoma or something like that. Uh, Martin Yan, Yan Can Cook, um, and Great Chefs of the West. I grew up watching that stuff. And then in the 90s when I was a teenager, Food Network became a thing, and we were all watching Emeril and Mario Batali and Rachel Ray, and the whole food scene has just kind of exploded from there. So this is my tiny little contribution so far. Um, again, guys, go watch the original video that I was inspired from. Link's amounts and everything are in the description and I will catch you next time. Stay hungry.